Hello Slashaholics, be sure to subscribe, click that like button, and click that bell. Also check out the companion channel, the 80s Slasher Library After Hours, for all the great podcast and original content. Links are in the description below. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. You can find those links in the description below as well, as well as our merch store and the Patreon page. You can support the channel for as low as $2 per month, get some great stuff like free ebooks, free merch, voice a character, and an audiobook narration, and so much more. Tonight's upload is brought to you by our patrons on the Patreon page. That's Tyrone Kennard, Nick Velcarve, Jeffrey Quick, Daniel Mackey, David Arnold, Alex Vanover, Krista Campbell, Rob Davey, Jay Gardner, Willow Ravenwood, Lauren Vaught, Kristen Kay, Michael, William Schaefer, Liam Anderson, Bree, Bonanza, Jellybean, Ryan Woodward, Allison Seib, Iron Alexa, Hawaii, Cecilia Spears, Sean Campbell, Catherine McClear, Seminole, and Carl Eakins. Welcome to episode three of Slash Tracks with Alex and Josh. I'm Josh. That's Alex. And What's up? Uh, tonight we're going to be watching Ghoulies with you. So get your copy of Ghoulies ready to go. Pause it at the beginning, and we'll tell you uh, when to when to start your movie. Um, we're watching on Hulu, so it starts with like a Cinemax thing. Um, so, tell you what, we'll let you know when the title screen, Ghoulies, is on the screen. And uh, that, that can be where you start. Um, so, Alex, your history with Ghoulies. Uh, it's pretty limited. Uh, my So, Ghoulies was the bastard little brother of Gremlins and Critters in my mind. So, whenever I would see that, that movie poster with the monster sticking his head out of the toilet, I was like, I don't know about this film. But... Uh, one thing about that film that always caught my imagination was in 1990, uh, the miniseries for It came out. So at that time, I was terrified of bathrooms. <laughs> so my brother would actually have to sit on the toilet when I was taking a bath for about you know a month or two. So when I saw that there was a monster mo- another monster movie where a monster was coming out of a toilet, my seven-year-old mind almost uh, you know lost it. That was not a good deal. <laughs> Did you know that the original movie? I gotta fix my camera here. The original movie didn't have the scene. The script didn't have a scene with them coming out of the toilet. By the way, nice thumbnail that you made. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't that good? I like that. Um, but yeah, um, the original movie didn't have that. It was part of a marketing thing, something to grab people's attention. And the director or writer of the movie, I don't, I can't say which for sure right now, uh, had that picture made of them coming out of the toilet. And then added a scene they shot after production was over. They shot a scene so there was something in the movie like on the cover. But yeah, the whole toilet thing was made just to grab people's attention. Um, and it worked. You know, it's it's iconic at this point for uh, cheesy cheesy horror movies. That even was if the you first have, thing even I if you haven't of. seen it, yeah, even if you haven't seen it, you know the little bald ghouly guy coming out of the toilet. So <laughs> that's uh, our thumbnail. <laughs> He's coming exactly. out. Exactly. He's coming to get us. <laughs> And each movie adds more ghoulies, and then the fourth one takes them all away and gives us Troll 2 stuff. Oh, I got a Facebook message. Isn't that nice? Right there in the middle of the... Uh... Got two of them. Let's turn that down. Sorry about that. Um, so what do you think about Halloween Kills being pushed back another year? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm good. I'm good with it, actually. I posted on Twitter the other day... Uh... 2021, hopefully, with Halloween Kills and then Scream 5 coming out in the same year, that has a lot of potential for 2021 being a really good year for horror. So I'm looking forward to it, actually. The little teaser we got was pretty good, you know, with them, uh, you know, let him burn, let him burn, and uh, they're driving away and the fire trucks are going. I wonder how they get them to respond that fast, because around here, they nev- they, it takes them like an hour to respond to something. <laughs> And it's like it's like they were just sitting around waiting, you know. Uh, Michael's they, burning. Let's go save him. Uh, um, yeah, the one time that the fire department, police department uh, needs to show up late, they actually show up on time. They're like, "Oh my gosh, this guy in the Michael Myers, you know, get up, you know, it can't possibly be him is burning to death down in the <laughs> cellar. Well, let's save him." I mean, how are they? I, I'll just have to see it to figure it out. I always thought it would would have been cool if that was a standalone movie, the last one they ever made for that particular series of events and as the uh trap is sealing him in like the bars are connecting like if he had been like reaching up to grab him and one of the bars went through his arm and pinned against the you know and it went through his arm and into there that would have been the perfect way to kill off michael myers you know like 
not only is he trapped down there, but now he's like pinned to the wall too, holding him down there. Um, I don't under so can you give me a little bit of I've I've watched every Halloween movie for the most part, but I don't understand why he is so invincible. They never really give us a backstory on why he is the way he is. Like part six kind of did with the whole thorn thing, but they they retconned all that uh, with this movie. They retconned even part two, which I think was the biggest mistake because I'm all about the sibling storyline because it made more sense. Because mm-hmm. like if my you know Michael Myers. There was other people he tried to kill that first movie and didn't kill, and he's not going after them after forty years, you know. Yeah, why uh, Lori? Why Lori? <laughs> yeah, it would have made more sense if Lori had been prepping. If they weren't going to be brother and sister, that if Lori had been prepping for forty years, getting ready for if he escaped, she could go follow him to where he goes and stop him from killing anybody else. Yeah, you know, like, like she could be the like, one doing the, story. the hunting. Yeah, exactly. Flip this. That yeah. would have made that would have made more sense if they weren't going to be brother and sister. But uh, I always thought it was terrifying. Just imagine being Laurie, knowing that as long as he's alive, you can never sleep peacefully at night, you know? And they did that anyways, but it's like, why would he... I've, I've, talked, I've talked this to death on my other podcast, so... Uh, but yeah, I was kind of upset about that. Good you know, slasher flick, though. Good slasher flick. Do you know what would be a really good scene? Um, in Like, if they would have put it in that, the new movie, the new Halloween movie, is a POV shot of Lori hunting Michael, but from her perspective. So she's watching Michael instead of Michael's POV, because yeah. they do that every once in a while. That would be a really nice way to turn things around. That'd be fresh. I would have loved to have seen a movie where like he go he escapes, goes to start a new killing spree somewhere, and you find out Lori's been prepping for this for forty years, you know, and yeah. she shows up in that town. She's like the new Loomis trying to save the day. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm a little upset they it's kind of like what they did with Ghostbusters Afterlife. It was going to drop this month, and now we don't get it until March 2021. Um, I would rather see it in theaters, though, than on, on video on demand. Uh, but Halloween Kills, honestly, I could see that one on video on demand and not be that upset about it. Uh, I saw 2018 in theaters. It's a great slasher flick, but they took my favorite part of the story and took it out. Mm-hmm. So it's just another slasher flick for me. Um but I do love the Michael Myers stuff and having, having you know the Jamie Lee Curtis back as Lori. Though I'm worried she's gonna die in this one pretty soon because they filmed for like over a month and she only filmed for ten days. Mm. So yeah, that's strange. Um, she, I read that she had signed on for the trilogy though, so maybe. Yeah, but she's I mean, not, flashbacks and stuff are possible. But um, maybe she's not featured as prominently in the the sequel, but maybe she'll be like one of the main characters in the in the you know the third part. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, they are in a hospital in this one at one point, and, you know, she's in her 60s and just went through all that physical stuff. Not another hospital. Not another Halloween 2 in a hospital. Yep, that's where uh, a big part of it's taking place, is a hospital. That's, that, so this, so this is Halloween 2. Part 4. Yeah, this is, like, the fourth time (laughs) they've done a Halloween sequel, and now they're going to go back to the hospital, huh? That's what it looks like. <clears throat> they retconned Halloween 2, the original one out, and now we get this uh, Halloween 2 in a hospital. So um, <laughs> That was one of my biggest gripes with the sequel to Halloween was like, the whole time they're in the hospital, Lori's kind of not as... They're trying to make her a stronger character, but she's even more kind of uh, not... She's more vulnerable because she's messed up. She's in this hospital. Um, I, I hope they don't. I just watched... Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to spoil anything, but we watched Invisible Man last night. There's a lot of scenes in the hospital, so it reminded me of Halloween big time. Well, we've given Michael a lot of attention. I haven't seen Invisible Man. It's good. So no spoilers there. No, it's uh, good. It's, it's worth your. It's worth the watch for sure. I can't believe I've never seen it yet. Um, so Ghoulies, I have not seen this movie since I was a little kid. Like I said, and uh, it's kind of like I'm watching it for the first time again. I know it's going to be fun to riff on. So, if you're ready, I'm ready. Um, I'm ready, man. Just tell me when. I'm at the one second mark of the Cinemax screen. All right. So, we're going to start ours, and we'll let you know when it gets to the Ghoulies title screen. Go ahead. All right. Start it? Yeah. PG-13, violence in adult language. Here we go. Yep. MGN, Roaring Liar, Lion. 
They don't use that line anymore. He's retired on a beach somewhere, drinking a mai tai. All right, guys. Uh, we're at the very first scene. Show somebody in a cage. Shows a little ghouly monster's teeth. If you're there, go ahead and start the movie. It's like a little rat ghouly. So that's where we're at. Start it up. We're seeing his eyes right now. What a way to start a movie, you know, with no context. If this was your first time <laughs> seeing the movie, you didn't know what ghoulies were. Yeah, meanwhile, back in Ernest's hometown, <laughs> the trolls have broke loose again. Ernest goes to hell? Is that what it's <laughs> Ernest, Ernest scared stupid. It looks like the trolls. Ernest goes to the beach. Ernest doesn't go to the beach. I've been to a few church services that look just like this. All he's really saying is, if anybody needs to go to the bathroom, do it now before the sermon begins. <laughs> Whatever he's drinking to make his eyes like that, I'll take three. <laughs> he's been drinking a little half and half. <laughs> <laughs> he, look, he looks like he's been drinking uh, antifreeze. Like Hulk Hogan in Suburban Commando. Oh, yeah. No and wonder these guys never talk. Fuck babies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not that baby. This other baby. It's the wrong one. Yeah, you're gonna mur you're gonna murder the the wrong baby. <laughs> oh my god, his horns are detached. He looks a little bit like uh, the guy in Ghostbusters Two who's in the painting. Like he could be related to that guy. Or. Uh, nuclear man from Superman 4, but skinny. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's his, had a legendary career. His costume even kind of resembles that, that nuclear man get up. That's hilarious. You didn't say the magic word. She looks like a broken down, like, third cousin of the Kardashians. <laughs> dollar store version yeah she's like the dollar store that's like, they couldn't get they couldn't get randy quaid so they got that guy you know the lesson here babies movies will electrocute you <laughs> hey who was in charge of setting up the banquet table for the satanic ritual like putting the skirt on and stuff what's randy the... quaid doing there and why did he take his hat off exactly that's what i just said i was like we can't afford randy quaid so we're gonna get his fourth cousin Kind of looks like Dewey Cox. Uh, he's just about to smoke weed for the first time here. Don't do it, Dewey. You don't want to. Can you get addicted? No. Uh, that's the worst part. <laughs> Not addicting. This is where all of Uncle Eddie's children come from, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> where is where is where was this film shot? Do you have any uh, backstory on this? Where was this filmed? No. He. Oh my God. He does look like John C. Riley and Randy Quaid had a kid. A little bit. I remember sure. the name John C. Riley. Took me a second. Oh my God. I swear that's. He's a time traveler. After they had a love child, and went back in time. <laughs> What was the budget for candles in this scene? The hand puppets are gnawing at my hand. <laughs> There's no bra budget. Yeah, no doubt. She's wearing, she's wearing linen. That's a pretty cool practical effect. Not that. The, uh, the chest? Yeah, the third nipple. Well, here well, we she go. She for that dry skin. Apparently it was so bad, even the ghoulie couldn't look at it. <laughs> that was a cutaway bad. They, um, whoever uh, did the editing for this film must have been in charge of the Friday the 13th Part 7 editing. It's like, it's about to happen, and they just cut away. This is what everybody voted on. Lots of votes for this one. What do you on think YouTube, of the music? There's like 90. What do you think of the music opening here? It sounds a little bit too upbeat. It sounds like it's going to take place at a carnival or something. <laughs> step right up, step right up. Win a doll for that girl of yours. 
Dude, some of those, some of the ghoulies were probably won as a prize when you're like shooting ping pong balls at the the fish tank, <laughs> the little fish fish bowls. The hand puppet ones hanging up there. Yeah. You know, uh, Carnosaur, some of the raptors are hand puppets that you see in it. Really? <laughs> yes, that's all they are. <laughs> they were bought at the BK Lounge. They were just like one of the. <laughs> One of the little giveaways in the kids' kids boxes. All you gotta say about this movie is Charles Band. Uh, I'm not familiar with Charles. Uh, let me know what's going on with him. Uh, you never seen the Puppet Master movies? Stuff I've like seen that. I've seen the first one on Showtime a long time ago. He made a lot of movies like that, like this and Puppet Master stuff like that. It's his uh, legacy. He's really good at it. What about Demonic Toys? Did he have his hand in that? Uh, I'm not sure. Eventually, there was a Demonic Toys vs. Puppet Master, though. I remember that. 100% I remember that. The movie poster was pretty cool, and I love toys, so I was immediately like, I gotta get this movie, but it was available nowhere. Do those statues really need nipples? I mean, the bat suit needs nipples more than a statue. <laughs> the, bat, the bat suit with nipples is basically what ruined the original franchise. <laughs> yeah, everybody had them except Batgirl, the figure. <laughs> It was like Linnea Quigley. Sexist. Yeah, nice. it was like Linnea Quigley in the graveyard where they just put like a piece of flesh uh, to cover her private parts, but it didn't look genetic. You know, it didn't look correct. It was just a piece of molding. Here, I hear there's gold out in the west, and then there are hills. <laughs> Heading west. At least the statue of the birds were included in the purchase of the house. Six foot deep, not eight foot deep. To fire that grave digger. He looks like a broke down Kyle McLaughlin. <laughs> got a fuck. What's he wearing? What's he got a letter for? What what sport does he play? Polo. He's, he's the captain of the B celebrity B list team. Hey, it's John C. Riley's and, and Randy Quaid's grandpa again. You know who he looks like? He looks like the guy who's like, you're uh, in Jason Lives. He's like, you're all doomed. You know, like you think I'm a, they think I'm a fart head. That guy. Yeah, yeah, the guy who drinks bourbon, like out of a little pint. You know, his letter just had to be S, didn't it? For like Satan. <laughs> Satan, and Satan, he's our man. If he can't do it. <laughs> that Dude, can that varsity jacket be any older, though? I mean, that is like a <laughs> 1950s varsity jacket. That's, that's straight out of a Stephen King movie. Right. If, it, if that was the case, it would have a D on it for dairy. <laughs> yeah, for dairy. How did they afford this house when she has to have her hair permed every other week? <laughs> Little, little delayed on your screen there. <laughs> it's like she had to sit there and go, "Is that a mouse?" That's no, a they mouse. were. Like, ah! They were like, "We're just gonna roll with the first cut because we can't afford to do another take right. <laughs> at all." His hair is feathered and lethal. Kind of resembles that guy from Showgirls. Oh my god! I think that's Kyle McLaughlin, the guy, uh, the guy who like discovers Elizabeth Berkeley. <laughs> Man, her career had, had a really strange arc. She went from Saved by the Bell as Jesse, and then a year later, she was in like a soft core, uh, you know, Skinamax special. She really Re thought that that movie was like going to be a big deal, an Academy Award winner, and <laughs> they're like you drowned. Can... I think that she she'd always she had a really like uh, long career in dancing before she was ever on Saved by the Bells. So she did a lot of dance numbers and you know striptease or excuse me Showgirls. Both those movies came out around the same time, so I confuse them. Um, but that that's probably what made her want to do that film. It's kind of like Armageddon and Deep Impact, like uh, movies that are identical and come out at the same time. Yeah. She that thought was... she was going to be in a big film, and then all she ended up being was like a twelve year old's porno. Gosh, you know, <laughs> I, re I remember when that movie because we had Showtime at my grandparents' house, and when that movie was like, my brother's like, 
you know what's coming, you know, the, the 1st of June, you know, it's available. And my brother's like, synchronize your swatch right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to step back for just a second. What a beautiful thumbnail. That house, like half the half the budget for this movie was spent in perms and Aquanet for his hair. Oh no, I think I missed one of the most important plot points of the movie. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to catch up now and figure out what's going on. Well, this movie's an hour and 20 minutes long, and it's spent the last two minutes of him just trying to get the floor clean before he can look at this box. What's in the box? <laughs> it's the original script. <laughs> oh, hey, it's Nuclear Man's costume. Yeah, definitely. That's the, sa that's the leader of the Satan Worshippers there. Where's his horns at? Gotta have the whole ensemble. Satan's Diary. Yeah, that's a mini Necronomicon. They they hand that out at colleges. No, uh, it's a like mini. A, oh, go ahead. A mini what? A, a mini a mini Necronomicon. Like you you go to your college and you got people standing at the doors, you know, handing them out to you. <laughs> I was thinking it's Satan's Diary. It's like had a really bad day today. Is in the desert with Jesus and he just wouldn't budge. <laughs> I'm starting to think he don't like me. <laughs> Two more people yeah. gave their. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Two more people gave their lives to Christ today. I feel like a failure. And Daddy, Daddy won't let me come home. Uh oh. He cut me uh, off. That's a great segue. She says, "Is any? It's not like people are going to wreck the place." And then cue a guy on a three wheeler with two <laughs> pirate flags. Hey, we know what happened to Ted from Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. <laughs> That's where he ended up. Oh, wait, he is that a day? That's a, like a dollar store Dana Carvey. No, well, I, you know who he kind of looks like? Actually, he looks like a dollar store Andy Dufresne. Yes, 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 yes. Needs it. Needs a pipeline of shit to crawl through. <laughs> He's about. Hey, he needs oh, another wait, pipeline that's of what shit. This movie is. He, yeah, he, he. You just stole my joke. He, this is where <laughs> Shawshank Prison, uh, the sewer system, led to. This movie. This film. <laughs> We're going to have people that love ghoulies get on us for this. Oh, well. <laughs> That's what this show is. Every once in a while, we'll have a serious commentary. But mostly, we're going to be uh, giving these movies their due. That guy is intense. <laughs> he uses that voice when he wants to uh, tell people how he actually feels. He like he just needs a puppet on his hand so he can project his actual true feelings. <laughs> like bubbles on trailer parts. Oh, totally. With Conky. <laughs> Shit hops. Dude, that um, jacket right there looks like the Thriller jacket, but black instead of red. Oh, yeah. It absolutely does. My fantasy baseball team's name is the Shit Hawks. <laughs> really? Yeah, and it's got a bird, a big eagle with the shitting. <laughs> Losing John Dunworth was so sad, man. Ah, oh, man, I went to see the Trailer Park Boys live in Portland, Oregon, um, a couple months after he passed away, and they did a big tribute to him. But um, they really shoehorned in a lot more Randy yeah. because Dunworth was probably half the show. So they just did a bunch more Randy stuff, which was good. I thought it was a lot of fun. I wouldn't have known the difference because it was my first live uh, show of them. But they they were very emotional. They yeah. they openly talked about how they missed him and the show was dedicated to him. That was a bad. That was a sad, sad thing. I love Bubbles, but I can't stand Mike Smith. I've read a lot of horrible art. Lucy, uh, the lady who played Lucy, left the show because Mike Smith was abusive, sexually harassing. Yeah, abusive and sexually harassing people. I guess. I don't want to like talk ill without knowing facts, but yeah, I just he just comes off as kind of a jerk. But I love his characters. I, you know, he's a good musician, from what I yeah. understand. Like, actually, a good musician. Grease lightning. Oh, wrong movie. <laughs> so this is exact. This is the part. Hey, for everyone who likes continuity, 
This is the scene right before Andy headed to the bank the next day to withdraw all the money. This is where he ended up. <laughs> so did Andy or did Andy not do it? He didn't do it. He didn't do it. He's he's innocent. Think so? Yeah. They never really say. Um, well, he's you definitely led heavily to believe that he's the only innocent man in Shawshank and he had to become a criminal to get out and to just survive. Is that joints or dude, party pal? Is that french fries or joints? I can't I tell. What? Like joints and the that candy where you get the little pieces of candy shaped like bananas and oranges. So I think he just had a pack of that in his pocket. They're not even trying to cover up the Budweiser cans, are they? No, Budweiser was a heavy sponsor for this for this film. <laughs> oh my god, this is so so bad. I watched, uh, excuse me, I played Trivial Pursuit one time with one of my friends, and I kept landing on the sports section in order to get to the other little pieces of your pie, and I, I know a lot about sports, and he, I beat him pretty handily, and he got pissed and knocked the table and the board game over and left. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, fuck this. I'm not even sports like a hundred times. Oh, they're going to do a ritual, because this is what normal people did at parties in the 80s. They would break dance, drink beer, and worship Satan. That's all the 80s were. And I miss those days. I was only a kid, but I did at least two or three satanic rituals a week. <laughs> hey, hey when I, speaking of when we were kids, when I grew up and started going to junior high, I thought there'd be a lot more mass food fights. Yeah. Because every other episode, was there was a food fight in a sitcom. Yeah. Or that every time a sweet thing would happen, violins would play. Yeah, I, I, it'd cue me up so I'd know how to react. One one negative thing that came from the 80s for me is my love for Full House and then Fuller House. I love both those shows. Yeah, uh, it's, like, it's like, I'm totally not the kind of person you would think that would like that. But then I'll watch it and be like, oh, <laughs> it's like, then I'll go watch Jason chop some people up, you know. Oh, hey, I was listening to this podcast called Halloweenies, and they're covering uh, the final chapter, and they had a really interesting take on something that you kind of just said. The Jarvis family, when they do the Jarvis sandwich on Corey Feldman, and they're talking about leftovers, they were going to have pizza, and it's like they're, they don't have a father there, so it's like a single mom. It's yeah. very Spielberg. It's very 80s Spielberg dynamic family, and it's really endearing if you think about it. That family... I wanted them to survive. I definitely didn't want them to die. That's for sure. And uh, when the mom, see what happened to the mom? Well, there's you know there's a deleted scene where the mom's in a bathtub, uh, and she's yeah, definitely no, but dead. it doesn't explain how she got there. Or if you put her yeah. there after and, she died, and why Jason put her in a bathtub? It's like he killed her. He's like God. Oh, <laughs> she hadn't showered from her morning run. I think the universe is trying to tell me to quit smoking. Yeah, that lighter sounds like it's on its last legs. It's walking the green mile, Josh. <laughs> Did this film get nominated for any awards? Oh, yeah. Best picture, best soundtrack, best actor for Randy Quaid slash John C. Riley. Cinematography. Uh, best supporting uh, actor, guy from Showgirls. <laughs> Best leading man, nuclear man. <laughs> Best actress, uh, Zelda. Apparently, there's the Triforce. Um, if I was at this party, this is legit. How what I how I would respond to this if this guy started doing this? I'd be like, um, this guy's a little too intense for me. I'm going upstairs. I'm gonna go see if there's, see if there's anything else going on. I would not stick around. You know who that girl looks like? The one next to the guy who talks with a puppet. <laughs> She looks like um, she looks like Phoebe Cates a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, from Gremlins. Yeah, from Gr and Fast Times. Not twice. <laughs> See, you'd be screwed if you had went upstairs because he said not to injure anybody in the room. 
Oh yeah, I'm already a dead man. Those yeah. <laughs> inadvertently I screwed up. You don't even have to say I'll be right back or anything. I'll be right back. He's got eyes. Oh god, I wasn't expecting that. That that thing is actually not for a satanic ritual. That's actually just for hopscotch. Yeah. <laughs> They're like after we after he gets done doing his spiel, we're gonna play we're gonna play hopscotch. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. Not a lot of people can pull off salmon as well as this guy is. That that is a beautiful shirt. Toad monster. Yeah, she's always the kind that would just stay. <laughs> so had he had he already performed a satanic ritual before? Is, or was this just on the spur of the moment? Spur of the moment. He Man, found he was that really book. Intense. Found the book from the like like the guy who did it before just kept like a box of like his souvenirs. So he had his <laughs> ritual costume, his ritual book. You know, pass, I want to pass this down to my kiddos one day. His keepsakes from his greatest like, seances. Up, upstairs, Christmas stuff, Halloween stuff, satanic ritual supplies. <laughs> <laughs> They dude, they they left that candle lit downstairs. Not that is reckless. That's the most dangerous part of this scene. It's a gozer. Oh. <laughs> it's Mauser. The puppets in this film were not brought to you by Jim Henson's Creature Workshop. <laughs> Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, look at that. that <laughs> there's one of the ex-president's masks just chilling from uh, yeah. Point Break. About to say that rat monster down there looks like uh, some, like, 90-year-old politician or something. Just all... <laughs> it looks like the Genesis Land of Confusion uh, Ronald Reagan mask. <laughs> <laughs> These people haven't even smoked weed, and they're laughing, like, constantly. <laughs> I'm not that active. Like, when I used to smoke weed, I would I would want to get to the nearest Taco Bell and play video games. There's no messing around. I've never got the giggles from beer, man. Not once in my life. If I never. Could... Okay, dude. I think... One more? <laughs> The director's like, this is good shit. This is good shit. Keep it keep rolling. Keep it going. Keep rolling. Yeah, keep, <laughs> keep the going. going. I need more. <laughs> Did you ever see the TV show My Secret Identity with Jerry O'Connell where he was like, he had superpowers. Uh, he was, uh, oh, dang it. The, the guy who designed the serum for Jerry O'Connell to take looks like Andy Dufresne in this movie. <laughs> oh, my God. Batman! Batman! Oh, it's a girl Robin. <laughs> Always giving the, the guy rose to females nowadays. Oh. Thought we were getting like a Batman and Robin thing here. God, how many animals died to make her outfit for this film? Two? Three? She's Joan Jet Light. That guy's a look. I, I want to be that focused on anything in my life just once. Nobody cares. What a lousy meal. They have a You're plate not... of butter, some bread, and some salad. What the hell are they eating? Where's the entree? He's in school. It looks like he teaches at college. <laughs> He's <What the> fuck? <laughs> Wait a second. He the, he's saying that he's in college right now, or he's yeah, in he school. Yeah, he said he's going to take the next semester off. <laughs> From what? Being the janitor at oh, the no. campus? <laughs> what is he doing? Going to take the semester off from hanging out with all the all the boys <laughs> down at Arnold's. He's got crow's feet for Christ's sakes. Hey, it's like for God's sake, Stephen. This some this sophomore year of yours is taking decades. He's he's got some intense eyebrows too, man. Like yeah, 
It's like if The Rock gave two people's eyebrows at once. <laughs> Focus! Focus! <laughs> he does, he, and this, that's a perfect example of how not to fill out a tank top. He has no muscle definition <laughs> whatsoever. She's like, God damn it, if he's not going to go to class, I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by God, I'm heading to class. Some kids aren't lucky enough to go to college when they're 40. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Well, you might have been right about the whole janitor thing. He rocks a broom. Oh, I know, he's killing it, man. Uh, he needs... <laughs> this is before, uh, like, uh, I can't even remember what they're called, where you'd put the, like, Lysol strip on the, <laughs> on the little mop part. He needs one of those. A Swiffer. Swiffer. He needs a Swiffer. Jesus Christ, man. Got issues? So he bought this house kind of sight unseen then because, I mean, it's this is like he's never, ever been in the house before. Exactly. Did you see your reflection? <laughs> you know what he looks like? I know we've compared people to a thousand other people already, but he looks like Eric Roberts a little bit there. <laughs> There's a narrator now? What the fuck? When did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> he was... He missed the first day of shooting, so they just... <laughs> Shoehorned him into the schedule. Yes. There's a narrator. Like, I'm never... <laughs> and he's trying Why to tell it like, like he's already told part of the story. <laughs> did Why I miss he... something? Why would the narrator, uh, even if he missed a day of shooting, the guy who's in charge of like editing the sound, he's like, "Fuck it, he didn't show up. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going back and po you know post production. Screw that. He's getting what he gets." <laughs> I will become nuclear man. <laughs> Jesus. This calls for Superman for <laughs> quest yeah. for peace. Oh, that move! Superman four made like eight dollars at the box office. <laughs> That'd be a fun one to uh, poke fun at one day. Oh, that would be an easy one to do. And but Superman. I love Christopher Reeve, though, man. It's it, that would be hard because he was a, he was an amazing person. Uh, he was in Village of the Children of the Damned, wasn't he? In that movie, Village of the Damned. Yeah, Village of the Damned. Yeah, um, that was another Cinemax special that I would catch every once in a while. I've never seen the entire movie at once. I'll never forget the brick wall thing he does. Like that scene is so vivid. He, you know, he he went to Juilliard. Where did he go? He went with him and Robin Williams went to like yeah, an Ivy League school. Thing. Man, I think he found uh, some of Sam and Dean's uh, books or something. How does them sigils down great? I'm not understanding why he they, like they have no character development. Like we don't know why. What's his motivation? He just found the book and now he's just so into it. He overheard the narrator and he's like, "Shit, that's what I'm supposed to be doing." <laughs> Thank yeah, we, you. <laughs> they clearly cut some scenes out where there was probably some more exposition. Either that or we were talking too loud and missed the first narrator part. I don't know. <laughs> When he was, when the dude was break dancing, the narrator's just going off, and we won't shut up. It's like Morgan Freeman talking, and he started break dancing. <laughs> I swear I haven't been putting out satanic sigils in the basement today. How was your day? <laughs> well, I went to class. You, you know nothing about that. <laughs> well, I definitely was not putting satanic sigils because the narrator told me to. Because of my sigils? I didn't write sigils, I told you. Wait, there's more! Uh-oh, here we go. That sweater was actually taken off the set of Rocky 1. That was <laughs> what he was chasing chickens in. So that just must be a, a set item from uh, shoot to shoot. He just made that in the basement with like, that ice pick and... <laughs> a soldering iron. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> What? Oh, you. Oh, he's, she's like my physics professor, and he's like, Mr. Bolton? Yeah, I actually graduated with, with him from that's, high school. Uh, that's kind of like, what the fuck is so bad about her physics teacher? Is he like a. 
Is he a diddler or something? What the hell? <laughs> I need some context here. <laughs> if he's that bad that you need like things things to protect you from him, you need to report his ass. He should not where, be a teacher. Where is the fucking narrator when we need him? <laughs> Mr. Dude, Bolton. Put your ass. sleeves down. You got him rolled up and you're sitting there freezing. You got a damn sweater on, guy. Oh, he looks exhausted, man. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> ain't not a lot You're of ghoulies so You're not that hot so yourself. <laughs> we had one ghoulie, the little rat thing. <laughs> She's like, come have dinner. He's like, no, I've had enough butter, bread, and salad without dressing. I'm good. <laughs> I'm filled. I'm, I'm not hungry. She's like, you're fasting? First it was keto. Then it was... <laughs> then it was... Now it's this. What the hell? Then it was going back to college at 40. And <laughs> you just... You never finish these things. <laughs> you're all over the place. <laughs> you never finish what you start. He's like, I'm beginning to think that your overreaction isn't about dinner. I just can't believe she's like, you look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, woman, you're not, you're not, you're no Sandra Bullock. I wonder if he made that cup with that ice pick in the fire. <laughs> He's wearing the outfit that Homer wore as a stone cutter in He's season put, three. He is putting Donatello and Raphael's weapons together into one. <laughs> That's one of the extra ones. <laughs> that looks, that looks like uh, a side, yeah, and a bow staff <laughs> tied together. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here we go. Oh. It's a ghoulie! <laughs> we have a ghoulie. At 30 minutes in to an hour-long movie. Yeah. Wait, there's a tree in the basement, or is he outside? He's out next to his oh. water feature. Okay, okay, okay. That is some thick-ass cobwebs. Yes. Yes. It's Don Rickles. <laughs> it looks like something Don Rickles shit out. <laughs> if you're their master, get that poor one out of that web, man. You can't get out of it. <laughs> no doubt. It's suffocating. That bald one, I'm just waiting him to go. Mr. Hanky, the Christmas food. <laughs> ghoulies one and ghoulies two. And if you want some more, watch Ghoulies three and skip part four. <laughs> They're cut like these puppets are like you cannot see the bottom of them. There is totally like there's no legs. Uh, they can't afford to show the whole full body. Sounds like they all swallowed cats and wind chimes at the same time. This is what happened to Tony Mon Montana's house after he was murdered. Uh, the place really went to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> Look at this place. Look at this house. Show me a Farrah Fawcett sushi. What? <laughs> he just threw. Hey, <laughs> he just threw a handful of poppets into that cauldron. <laughs> Pop. Where's the? Why has the narrator not come back yet? Yeah, we've only had a little bit of narrator, and we're like thirty-five minutes into this. I know. I, I'm missing him. I need some context. <laughs> Oh, God, in part four, they, like, the little ghouly guys talk English. They, wait, they actually talk? They never stop talking. Oh, man. They start getting that Freddy Krueger treatment. Do they start saying bitch, too, around four no, and they five? Just say, they just never stop talking. The mouse never moves. It's like Abbott Costello comedy thing for trying to do. This is the first movie that ever jumped the shark in the very first film. 
got to get the man. The first thing you do when you buy an old house is you fix the roof. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it's re- got a constant it. leak. Seems like a bad Claritin commercial at this point. Oh man. When do you when do you like show the medicine and get the mucus to run away? <laughs> Little muc- the little snot people that try to move in, you take the Claritin, they go away. <laughs> His girlfriend is going to be pissed. He is just messing that base- basement up. Practicing like <laughs> this is a this is a Randy, uh, Randy and them. Uh, we're practicing for community theater. <laughs> Jonathan, where are all the black lights and candles? Wasn't that always their excuse on uh, Trailer Park Boys? What? When they're, when they're wearing like outfits and stuff, Randy and uh, they would be like, uh, "We're practicing for community theater. We're in play. <laughs> <laughs> they're role playing." He's like, "Take the take the bun off it, Rand. It's still a burger." <laughs> you act like you haven't got your grade five or something. <laughs> Ricky's supposed to go back to back to school, but instead he just sells weed as, as the janitor on campus. Hash coins. Yeah, hash coins. Okay, I thought she was like breaking eggs into the sink for a second. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> He's like, I need those eggs. There's I a certain see. there's a certain uh, spell I need those eggs for. Why are you wasting them? Would you like your eggs fertilized or non-fertilized? <laughs> you should. You're the one that goes to college. Yeah, she should have seen this coming. She's don't the fancy you hear the narrator? Educator. Oh, I don't either. <laughs> That's a hell of a sidetrack. <laughs> Why I've did I still can't get over that? I've never gotten that sidetracked before where I've just been in the middle of something. Next thing I know, I'm dressed up doing satanic rituals. <laughs> Sorry, I got sidetracked, Alex. We can finish now. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> my bad. My blunder dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll work it out. Oh, her name's Rebecca. I thought it was Robin. <laughs> I got, I'm getting all these people mixed up. I still don't know. Is it? He's Jonathan, right? Is he? <laughs> I think his name is Jonathan. I thought it was Nuclear Man. I don't. They they obviously have a hard time with money. They need to fix that drip on the faucet back there. It's driving me insane. That's gonna add up. It's Did he add stop up. on the way up to talk to her and like blow dry his hair? <laughs> <laughs> he got, got, got out of his there. outfit really quick. Blow dry, blew through his hair. Hold on, I can explain. <laughs> Hold on. You'll be a showgirl yet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he. Oh, here we go. More candles. He's lighting a candle right next to a lamp. This is reckless behavior. Turn the lamp off if you're going to use a candle. What the hell? <laughs> there you go. He see good, good boy. Listen. All right, tidy whities <laughs> Those are tidy whities Why does his top blanket look like the material that they make sleeping bags out of? Gratuitous like, sex scene coming up. <laughs> She's like, can you put the robe back on just for tonight? She, there is something unsettling about her, and I can't figure it out. I don't know. It's like... It's like Kimmy Gibbler with a perm or something. <laughs> this is Kimmy, Kimmy Gibbler's older sister. <laughs> Andrea Joe Barber the first. McIntyre. <laughs> she is very understanding because if I came home and found my significant other in the basement doing satanic rituals, I don't think we'd be having sex like two hours later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think He's the like, sidetrack defense would work. It's like, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm, 
I'm sorry, I blacked out again. I apologize. You were summoning demons, literally summoning demons from hell. <laughs> Downstairs. You, you were communicating with Satan. <laughs> we're not okay. Yeah, I think she's kind of into it, though. I, like They are. Oh, here we go. That thing's like, oh, God, there's a hand up my ass. Help me. <laughs> the ghoulie's like, I'm here for the gangbang. <laughs> You ever seen that SNL sketch where uh, Will Ferrell's got a uh, ventriloquist puppet and the puppet's talking about being sexually diddled by him because he's always got his hand up there? No. You gotta see that skit, dude. It's fucking hilarious. He's like, beg he's like begging the audience for help every time he talks. <laughs> because he's constantly being molested. Yeah. I'm saying there's a satanic circle under the bed and you're fucked in two ways. <laughs> Is he chanting in bed? Pillow talk. He got sidetracked, dude. Give him the Jeez, man. This guy's singularly focused on Satan. Gonna give you a little ghoulie. <laughs> a little goulash. I hate it when you do that, Jonathan. <gasps> Elo, you're Hawaiian. I told you the last time you did this that it was the last time. I am so stupid. But honey, I got sidetracked. <laughs> That's normal normal couple fights right there. I'm tired of your lying, your cheating, and your rituals and all of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get in trouble for like looking at my cell phone too much if I'm in you know in the same room with my girlfriend. This guy it took the cell phone thing to a whole nother level. <laughs> He's not being present at all. One one satanic ritual is forgivable. Two of them, she's out. <laughs> That's her limit. <laughs> we still have no more. We still have. We the, the narrator has still not shown up again. What the hell is this? It's like shit. We forgot our costumes. We'll be right back. <laughs> and these are our real voices. definitely not being dubbed over with other voices. <laughs> he looks like Templeton from Charlotte's Web. I played Templeton in the school <laughs> play of Charlotte's Web. Get the hell out of here, really? I did, did, did. Humble. H-U-M-B-L-E. <laughs> Humble. When I was in a play, uh, as, Charlotte, huh? When I was in a grade school play, we did the boy who cried wolf. I was a tree. I had, <laughs> I was just a tree. I did a, I was in a modern version of Cyrano de Bergerac. It was called Cyrano and Rocky. Damn. And uh, I was the one that had the smart kid telling me what to say. I've never seen a guy who needed clear eyes more than this man. You will drink and tell me if it's Diet Dr. Pepper or Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I bet you cannot tell the difference. Their skulls look like the main villain in uh, Suburban Commando. Yes. When ho you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> His head is like part, part steel. That must be a light beverage. <laughs> yeah. He took all the fizzy lifting drink from Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. <laughs> that guy's got a drinking problem. We don't know how. Uh, he's like, I haven't had wine in over 3,000 years. You know, if they'd been just a little bit bigger, they wouldn't have fit in the triangle. Then what? But you can call us dopey and sleepy. Gosh. Where are the other five dwarfs? No, dopey and sleepy. He needs to wish for a degree because obviously he's not going to get one the way he's behaving lately. This would be a good time for the narrator to fill us in on some stuff. 
<laughs> I swear, if that's the only time the narrator talks. <laughs> I, you know, watching this for the first time now in my 30s, I am confident that I, as a six year old, I would have thought this movie sucked. Yeah. We should watch Troll and Troll 2. <laughs> Troll, the first Troll is fun. I like the first Troll. The second one's fun for a different reason. And I swear, this is still my real voice and not being dubbed over. Yeah, they they spent more money on post production with the voice dubs, or like dubbing, than anything. <laughs> yeah, give give the book to the creature with no eyes, asshole. Jeez, the we. Uh oh, here's his Tom Cruise moment. I wear my sunglasses at night. <laughs> So I can do satanic rituals. He was He's like a week removed from writing 122. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I thought it over. Two satanic rituals is okay, but no third one. <laughs> she's like, as she's doing this film, she's like, how the hell did I get myself in this film? What led me to this? How did we go from the front door to the library? <laughs> it's like, don't talk. Let's go move to the library, and then we'll finish the conversation. I accidentally got grapes in my eyes. One of his, one of his eyes is off-center. Is that on purpose? One pupil is straightforward, the other one is up. Looks like he got a couple green grapes, white grapes shoved in his eyes. She is going for the Academy Award right here. Look at her face. It's just disgust. Did I hear an echo? I... Echo! Uh, yep, yes. There is one, yes. I'm so sorry, Jonathan. Jonathan, I apologize. I was filming Ninja Turtles, the first film, earlier. <laughs> I was April's understudy. <laughs> Fade to black. There's a narrator! The narrator sounds like Booger from Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Dudley Dawson. And everybody's wearing the sunglasses from their performance at the end. <laughs> wow, they're actually eating a protein tonight instead of just butter, bread, and salad. Yeah, you say that, but you'll notice one of the ghoulies isn't around anymore. <laughs> Do you remember the promo for Back to the Future 2 at Pizza Hut where you'd get, like, a large pizza and they'd give you a pair of, like, glasses from the movie? Pizza Hut yeah, sponsored yeah. this scene. They're actually in charge of getting all of these people their sunglasses. No, that's what you get for having undercooked meat. Oh, yes, excellent. I wanted to ruin my dinner party. Here we go. You don't want to know what I just did in here. That looks like Don Rickles, man. I can't get over it. Oh, my gosh. It's like, I'm really ugly, but damn, your eyes are fucked. <laughs> if they just had some milk, they could just put some milk on these and they'd be fine. Meak. Meak. You can't get it out of season, though. <laughs> Meak. Where's the third Catwoman when we need her? I'll sit down. <laughs> what the fuck? It's satanic rituals, demons, and I'm trying to sell a new line of sunglasses. Uh, yeah, let me tell you about probiotics. <laughs> I'm glad you're all here. <laughs> Have you ever heard of essential oils? And I have got an amazing timeshare. 
uh, offer for you on this place. Have you ever heard the word Nugenics? <laughs> Swear he just talked like Splinter from TMNT for a second. <laughs> Master if, I, Yoshi. if I had to choose which pair of glasses I would wear in this in this scene, I think I would go with the windshield wipers. Yeah, that was pretty neat. I wanted to see him get used. Yeah. Here we go. He's again. been possessed by the leprechaun and leprechaun in the hood. He's a zombie <laughs> that... fly girl. That's actually what Ray Charles' eyes look like if he takes his sunglasses off. That table is gone. Oh, oh, here we go. Something's gonna happen. They can barely they can barely carry the candles, poor thing. Okay, this movie just got really dark. Okay. Woo! Really dark. Okay, he's levitating now. Why are they dressed that way? <laughs> <laughs> Give me the power, I beg of you! Set the center of the aisle. I feel like Charles Lee Ray would have already got this uh, thing done by now. Can we cut eye holes in these sheets, please? <laughs> Malcolm, Malcolm, Graves? Malcolm Graves is the name of the grave. <laughs> it's Malcolm Craze. <laughs> yeah, that's what it. That's what they're saying. Nah, 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 nah. He's got the force now. <laughs> if we can somehow get the guy who puppeted these things on on the show, that would my whole life would be complete. Why are they got to be wearing pointy white jeans for? Stop it! <laughs> ah, Christopher Lloyd. Hey, we got a hocus pocus sighting. The guy who popped out of the grave—that was the one who was in charge of like chasing down the kids from the Sanderson sisters. My other hand stuck louder. Oh, thank you. Cutting some eye holes for the left eye. <laughs> okay, I'm good. <laughs> Got a wire up there. Man. Wherever they bought all these candles from, the guy who owned the candle store was like, You want how many candles? For what? <laughs> Do you want do you want satanic candles? <laughs> or like ones you carry around like to light the room. Or non-denominational. Because <laughs> there's a difference. <laughs> if they try to tell me oh, go ahead. No, if they try to tell me that the guy uh, that looks like Andy Dufresne is going to college, we're turning the movie off. <laughs> I'm just expecting him to pull a tablecloth out and go. When Eddie said he didn't like his teddy, you knew he was a no-good kid. <laughs> when he threatened your life with the switchblade knife. You know you know Rocky Horror, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Frank the Footer, man, come on. Makes you cry, and I did. That's a movie we can never do because I wouldn't want to make fun of it. I'd be singing the whole thing. <laughs> we could do the sequel, Shock Treatment. That's a fun oh, one. God. I've never seen that movie. I've read about it. I like it, but it's I'm weird. Where would you even get that? Is that it's available? Got it I've got it. Okay. Got it on VHS, but you can you can stream it. You know what movie I want to do is this movie called Blood Song, and it was filmed in the '80s during the like slasher boom. Frankie Avalon, the guy from the beach movies with uh, Annette, Annette Funicello, he kill he kills people with a flute. Okay. Yeah, it's called Blood Song. Scenes of it were filmed at my high school in North Bend and Coos Bay. Oh, cool. I'll have to check that out. 
it's you can wa- uh, you can stream it on YouTube. Okay, that puppet is per- is a pervert. Y'all need to be careful. Yeah. He's on a registry. <laughs> that that this puppet is turning me on. <laughs> Never a good idea to walk towards a moving bush. No, no. <laughs> Especially if it moves one area and then it moves in another. It's yeah. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I got gotcha. you. This guy has zero chance with this woman. If he gets anything, I am gonna be pissed. You know what prime rib does to me, baby. <laughs> Have a Snickers. You're not yourself when you're hungry. Yeah, no doubt, man. I have no comment. Why would he want a little girl's tum? Uh, yeah, and she's actually, like, buying into it. How would that be a turn on? that? I'd be like, I'm calling the cops. Dude, just drinking straight out of a pint of vodka. There's no way, man. I'd need a chaser for sure. She should get an, actually an Academy Award because she's pretending like she like I like enjoys him tickling her. You know right. she doesn't. The whole time she's probably like, "Gone, hurry up!" <laughs> this is the best me. acting job in the movie. There's a bunch of pennies down here. <laughs> you can't take the ghoulies' wishes. Uh, remember that shit pipe we were talking about? I think yeah, it's it spouting. <laughs> Gotta crawl through it, buddy. Trust me, you'll come out clean on the other side. <laughs> She's gonna find Andy's rock hammer down there. It looks like Martin Short's bastard child. Uh, yes, he does, and he also looks like the guy from uh, Reanimator a little bit. I thought they were going to come out of a toilet at some point. I read a thing saying that they filmed a toilet scene. The toilet scene is actually in the deleted scene. The one deleted scene. The one deleted scene (laughs) where the narrator does his first narration. Yeah, that that was the only scene they could afford to do two takes on. And they're like, meh, meh. Alex, does it sound like somebody's being killed by a bunch of little mutant demons outside? (laughs) No, man. You know how how we get when we're drinking vodka and smoking (laughs) weed. (laughs) You're right. Yeah, you know how it is. It's just He's another day in the office. That's his sex sounds. God, where is Jason Voorhees when we need him? <laughs> Please. There's Say not no one crack. Oh my god. There's not one character in this movie that I like. No, no. I like the puppet. <laughs> yeah, I like the puppet. And the narrator. I like the narrator. Man, he really filmed it in for this film, uh, for this movie, though. He, he really just kind of punched a time clock on that, on this movie. <laughs> I'll narrate whatever the hell I want, whenever the hell I want, and if you want me, that's what, that's what we'll do. Oh my god, it's the Joker is killing Robin. That puppet looked like the Joker, and her name's Robin. It says up next on it says up next if I move my mouse it says troll two. <laughs> it really does. Oh, so the, I, can, I can click it and go to troll two right now. This is a this is Atomic Man, right? He's back. He's back. It's nice to see that Joey Buttafuoco landed on his feet. He got a film roll. Look at him right there in the stairwell. He's doing well. I'm there. <laughs> That's not a very original name for your penis, but Mr. Okay. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think sex would ever be in the cards again, but here we are, Mr. Dick. Look what <laughs> look at us. Look at us now. I wasn't sure if it was ever gonna happen again, but here we are. Can I talk to Mrs. Bu- oh. <laughs> Mr. Dick would like to talk to Mrs. Vagina. Freddy in the oh. house. 
phenomenal effect right there. That was beautiful. As a matter of fact, that tongue was used in New Nightmare later on. Yeah. It had a very long career. <laughs> oh, it's actually not that bad. The tongue looks good. Is that supposed to be a joint? Is that Mr. Weed? <laughs> that tongue was actually just a really, really old fruit by the foot. Oh, God. I like fruit by the foot. Fruit by the foot is exquisite. It's its own food group. <laughs> I, hey, imagine tasting it right now. I can, I can imagine it in my head right now. What, that old tongue? No. <laughs> yeah, if I had a dime for every time I had an old tongue in my mouth. No. <laughs> fruit, fruit by the foot. At least you didn't say if I had a dime for every time I had an old tongue on Mr. Dick. Then, you know, <laughs> that would have been a totally different conversation there. Well, I'm possessed and do everything you say, so why are you trying to talk me into it? <laughs> exactly. What, what's the point here? Why, he, he's, he should just phone it in at this point. Were you in the basement again, Jonathan? With Mr. Dick? <laughs> you gotta wake up and do your new, your new dance routine. Oh, uh, yeah, John. Is there a satanic sigil under the bed again? This is like the only horror movie where there hasn't been any, like, we haven't even, the kill count is at zero. I know. <laughs> no one's died. Dead meat would hate this movie. Not one person has died yet. Well, that's a lie. That's a lie. Everyone who was in this film on screen, their careers died. I love all the ram heads everywhere. They're really driving that home. The the interior decorator was actually a Skeletor. He's turned on his bright lights. Dana Carvey. What's up, man? <laughs> man, career Andy after Wayne's World really nosedived, huh? No, it did. Don't say no nah to me. This was the film that was uh, that he accepted right after Master of Disguise. Turtle, turtle. <laughs> I came to be in the turtle club. Am I not turtly enough? That movie, Master of Disguise, is like 58 minutes long. It is... What the hell was that? Oh, no, dude. That movie is so... I feel so bad for the actress in it. Oh, oh, yeah. She's like, I'm going to be in a movie with Dana Carvey. This is going to be great. Of course I'll do it. Yeah, in part four, it's pretty much those two talking like that the whole movie, but wearing costumes that make them look like ghoulies. What? Are you serious? They never stop that back and forth banter. Oh, my God. They're like, Come on, we gotta go. I told you we gotta go. We're going right now. No, I mean we gotta go right now. Okay, we're gonna go right now. He can see us. No, he can't see us. And like it's just constant. Well, it oh. didn't work. It didn't work so well in the first one. We're just gonna repeat it <laughs> over and over again in sequel. That puppet is calling us over. Oh my gosh. Sorry for the little person on the left. They look like they're in pain. <laughs> like I'm being genuine here. Did she just? Even the hey, ghoulie is in pain that it's in this movie. somebody your own size. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What, what was the point of narrator? What was the point of why did they get the ghoulie? <sighs> I need more narrator. And my lips are definitely moving to the words I'm definitely saying. What, they've decided to be good now? Yeah, what's the deal here? Um, They're going to turn on their mask? God, I feel bad for these actors. Did you see his foot? He's got that... Man. I wonder, if his, I wonder if their backs are actually humped like that or if that's just the way their costume was designed. Like he was like dragging a foot and stuff. It was turned sideways. So maybe he has a club foot. Yeah. But I mean, maybe they had fun making the movie. Don't Bogart that joint. Well, 
Everybody smoked weed now, and they don't have the giggles. They had them before when they were drinking. Yeah, Budweiser gives you the giggles. Uh, weed just makes you, you know, calm and relaxed. You rat face fuck. Are we actually? Is this a kill? Is that a kill? Are we gonna I count think it? So. I think Hallelujah. So. No, go back to sleep. I like what I can see. Uh, I can smell you. <laughs> it's the Joker. <laughs> Did this get a theatrical release? Um, I think so. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna get you, Batgirl. <laughs> <laughs> Is okay. Is that a ghoulie in the mask? What is this? I don't know, but I've seen Goosebumps episodes that are scarier than this. Oh wow, that's that's pretty cool. That looks like the hand from the book It. Stephen King's It. That looks like the hand. It's Godzilla. Oh Run. no. Meanwhile, back in the basement. We have to defeat Superman. <laughs> Scratch him. He looks like he's just about to be put in a container and become Tar Man. He's like a he's couple days away from that. That's the worst worm I've ever seen. You were just in the bed upstairs. Okay, so he's not dead yet. Oh, there it is. Oh, that was. There we go. Jackpot. Jackpot. Where did all these people die at? I don't remember three people dying. Yeah, exactly. There's three corpses. <laughs> the fuck, narrator? Where are you? <laughs> narrator, why's you Reba... had one job. Was Was Reba McIntyre Gibbler okay? She should have never turned down Secret of the Ooze. She should have just did the Ninja Turtle sequel instead of this. She blew it. God, he's zoned out next to his Ram statue again. He does this all the time. God, put some pants on, woman. <laughs> That's not even my shirt. That's Jonathan's oh, shirt. There's a snake somewhere, damn it. I want to see it. I keep hearing it. I thought she ripped that necklace off earlier. <laughs> she did she did rip that off earlier. <laughs> oh man. She did. Have you ever seen the true crime documentary The Staircase? No, I'm gonna oh, have well, to though. <laughs> that, so that's that's what actually happened. Okay. Oh my god. Her name's Becky. I thought it was Robin or Rebecca. Oh Rebecca, Becky, okay. I've got the power Z Man. <laughs> god, he wishes. Okay, so he's going to bring her back. So this is basically the plot of Return of the Living Dead 3. Okay, you've already realized she's dead, like, five minutes ago. So why are you still... You gotta have the robe. That is so wrong. That is so wrong. Druids are napping on the job. Can't find a good druid these days. J blank L. I'm just skipping that letter. Druids would look better if they were... It'd be a lot better if they were wearing black ropes with pointy hats, is all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, no. These are his dinner guests. If they would have just kept their sunglasses on. 
Did Mr. Dick survive? How could my, how could all of my Satan worshiping possibly backfire like this? How? That's his father. They have names. Grizzle Gritadu. <laughs> they finally introduced their the Kellis characters' <laughs> names an hour into the film. I paid off all the payments and paid all the interest. You are now my property. <laughs> the title just came in the mail. You are mine. We got to build a cell right here. We got to <laughs> build a cell right here. Right on, here. <laughs> on paper. This is all mine. What movie? What movie was that? Come on. I don't know. You know I don't know. Pete Dragon? Oh, years and years and years ago. Pete's Dragon was part animation, part uh, live action, right? Okay. The original. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah, I've seen parts of it. You killed them. You were, like, getting off on it. No, she fell down the stairs. <laughs> no, you didn't. She fell down the stairs. He just said, I suppose I did, but she literally got scared and fell down the stairs. She tripped. It, like, it wasn't even magical. <laughs> yeah, it's nobody's fault. That, that would just be, you know, that would be... <laughs> We need to perform an autopsy before you take ownership of that. Uh-oh. Fog machine. Heavy, 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 heavy. I'm melting. Melting. What a world, what a world, what a world. So he's, he's actually his son then. That's what they're trying to tell us? Uh, yeah, I guess. Well, that explains why he knew all the chants by heart. He said, greet your father, and now he's saying, you are my sacrifice to Lucifer. <laughs> I can chant better than you can chant, and I don't have to cross my arms like that. Maybe he was the baby in the opening scene. Ah. Oh, yeah. He probably was. Full circle, bitch. Yeah. Ooh, I like her hair. Yeah, what what's going on here? What did she use to wash that? It's so full of bounce. <laughs> oh. Mr. Dick. <laughs> it's not Rebecca, it's Reba. <laughs> it's Miss McIntyre to you. Her career had a major upswing. She was in Tremors uh, about a year later. Yeah. Did she get shorter? <laughs> well, you know, she's dead, so all the blood is dropping to, the, you know, gravity's playing a major part in her height right now, probably. Dude, she is high as fuck. Look at those, look at the, look at the, her look eyes. Her eyes are dilated, yeah. They're dilated yeah. hardcore. Wait, wait a minute. So he just throws her aside? I thought he was happy she was back. She died again. The, the little short people killed her, apparently. You try it before you buy it. <laughs> Earlier in the film, Jonathan's like, yeah, I'm, I'm dropping out for a semester. And she's like, she's like, Jonathan, you've been in school for nine years. And he's like, yeah, I know. They're called, <laughs> I'm they're called doctors. But Van Wilder, you have to go back. Exactly. His dad's pissed because he's been paying tuition on Jonathan's college for like 11 years now. Because everybody kisses their father on the lips. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they hit me and Mr. Dick. Oh, it's the narrator. <laughs> this is this is where Randy Quaid has been the last ten years. He's just, he's just been waiting behind the door with with the, with the spear. <laughs> yeah, they thought he was crazy, but he knew all along. I've been waiting. <laughs> I did 
did it! I did my job! Yay! What the fuck? Shocking. That's a shocking revelation. I'm surprised that they actually pulled off some of these special effects for the quality that this movie is. I'm not dead anymore, honey. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's been dead twice. I was partly dead. Oh my god, he is a nuclear man. Holy shit. <laughs> He's only half the man he used to be, though. He's doing a Care Bear stare right now. Bear, bear, countdown. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Bye, deep. <laughs> Is that a ghoulie coming from up in the sky? <laughs> I shall hit you with the blue. Exactly. I love that they have the G.I. Joe laser colors from their eyes so we know who the good guy is and who the bad guy is. It was all a joke. Even the house is trying to get the fuck out of this movie. <laughs> the house is like, okay, enough. Enough. That's what you guys get for dressing like that. Oh my god, there goes our kill count. What the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah, we're back to zero. Man, I want some of that weed. And so that whatever Budweiser they were drinking. Have you ever shit. watched the movie Ghoulies? On weed? On <laughs> weed. <laughs> John Stewart, right? <laughs> oh, I thought that was a hearse. The way they were painting, it looked like a hearse. I was like, God, put the film roll in the back of that fucking thing and wheel it out of here. It's like they had a plan of who was going to get in which car whenever they got, did their getaway. Like, <laughs> when, the, when the dinner party started. Okay, when the house gets ready to explode and the little people wave us goodbye, you get in the black car, we get in the white car, and you get in the Jeep. I got it? Uh, everybody know, there's, know which car their getaway car is? I mean, they got into it perfectly. We only have we only have enough money to do this once, so don't mess it up. He's sitting there right there saying, I gotta stop by this little tree with a little rock next to it. <laughs> Sorry, another Andy Dufresne joke. You have to do. <laughs> this guy has been a real shithead the entire film and now everything's just fine for him. Uh oh, ghoulies. <laughs> Freeze frame! We brought along the sock puppets. Cue the music from Tales from the Crypt. Well, that was Ghoulies. Oh, thanks a lot, guys, for voting that one today. That was a real treat. Woo! Yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, let us know if we should do the sequels. <laughs> Please, God, don't let us know. <laughs> Please don't. My screen does literally say, though, uh, I'll include a screenshot into the video if I can. <laughs> it says, up next, Troll 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Hulu thinks, if you're watching Ghoulies, you must want to watch Troll 2 next. <laughs> move, your, move your mouse down by the play button, don't click it, and see if it brings up the, uh, the line. And see if it says, up next, Troll 2 for you. It'll be on the right on the bottom whenever you move your mouse. Okay. On Hulu. Hold on. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. What does it say yours is? Oh, wait, 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 wait. So, yeah, it's, no, up next, Troll 2, then Ghoulies 2, then <laughs> Meatballs 4. <laughs> what a combination. <laughs> Meatballs 4. All right, we're going to start Troll 2 now, so get, no. <laughs> oh, God. I'm good. Just get some popcorn <laughs> ready. Okay, Ghoulies was definitely entertaining. <laughs> like, I didn't get bored watching it. Um, the, I'm never going to get over the narrator just in the middle of the fucking story. Two, two parts. The narrator was in two parts for, like, uh, 45 seconds total. Yes. <laughs> oh, if we miss something, 
I hope we miss something. Is all I gotta say, because it's just out of nowhere. There's a damn narrator, um, and the whole ending. I don't know what was going on. The girl died. She didn't die. She died again, and then she came back to life. And all the people that were killed by ghoulies were magically healed because the guys shot lightning at each other out of their eyes. They don't explain anything, and then um, we're just that. I guess that was the jump scare when they they're in the back of the Jeep Cherokee and they just pop up out of nowhere. Um, okay, <laughs> all right, makes me want to see part two really bad. Great right? job. I can't. I, I got to see it. Like I'm gonna have to watch it tonight now. Um, no, seriously, let us know uh, if there's any movies like this that you would like us to riff on. We're definitely going to do the Carnosaur movies uh, at some point and uh, Ghostbusters 2016. I think that's going to be the next one because that was like, it only lost by like a few votes. So apparently there's a lot of people that want to see that. So uh, what We're do you think? I have to watch that movie again. I can't, I I, I never thought I would ever watch Ghostbusters 2016 ever again, but here we are. I'd rather watch Ghoulies 4 at this point. but I would uh, rather watch Meatball 7 than Ghostbusters <laughs> 60, 2016. So, uh, is that the next one? Ghostbusters 2016? I'm in. I'm in. All right. If you're there, I'm there. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to tear this one apart. Um, you know, behind the scenes, it was actually... The reason it was written the way it was was to do whatever they could to screw over Ivan Reitman. Um, really? Yeah, like okay. the, the chick that was running Sony and stuff at the time. The woman, um, I call her a chick because I have no respect for her. Um, there's all kinds of emails that leaked and stuff where she was like pretty much just trying to ruin his legacy and stuff. Because, I mean, if it wasn't that, they could have just written the, the guys in as their real characters and had mm -hmm. them just pass the torch. And I would have enjoyed that. But they... The CGI ruined it. Uh, having the guys come back and play different characters ruined it. It's like, it was just, it was just bad. You know, yeah. it's, Ghostbusters should always be practical. Um, and that movie proved it. So I, I heard that Afterlife's going to have a lot of practical. Afterlife, everything I've read and seen so far, the, even the trailer itself, just I really think the tone of the film is going to be great, too. I just, I, it looks like a good movie, and I cannot wait to see it. That's the one thing about COVID that kind of pissed me off. Yeah. I wasn't as upset about Halloween Kills, but I wanted to see this Ghostbusters movie the second I saw the trailer, so yeah, got to wait out. longer. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Like me sweet. and my kids were ready to see this. We were going to go see it opening night. Yeah. And uh, we live in a pretty small town, so like opening day, even it's there's still like half a theater, <laughs> like empty chairs, so uh <laughs> That sounds like a dream to me, man. I, I, my goal would be to go to a movie theater with nobody in the damn thing, so I could just like have the whole place to myself. I feel like they could do, they could open up the theaters and just like plastic off like some of the seats, you know. At this point, mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh, a Gal like a Gallagher concert, like <laughs> they're just putting tarp all over all the seats. Like, like make people sk like skip a whole row and like skip every three chairs or something. I don't know. You'd have to do, well, whatever. I mean, I guess the the now they're now they're saying, oh, COVID can spread indoors and it can spread longer than six feet. So who knows what the hell's oh, gonna happen? Good now. lord, it's mutating. It's actually it's uh it's becoming intelligent now. It's weaponized itself. <laughs> Coming to theaters, <laughs> COVID nineteen. I'm like, do I have to see COVID's one through eighteen before we go yes. see COVID nineteen? Yes, yes, you do. Okay, yes, you do. All right. And it's, it's a whole it's a whole new trilogy. That's the <laughs> fucked up part. So. <laughs> You know, They're COVID like, 20 and 21 are filming at the same time. You thought COVID's 1 through 18 were bad. <laughs> Buckle up, you son of a bitch. Here comes COVID 19. Fuck 2020. <laughs> this time it's personal. Yeah, fuck, fuck your plans. <laughs> Tell you want to hear God say fuck you. Tell him your plans. <laughs> COVID 19. <laughs> You thought you had plans this year. Well, COVID-19 has showed up and shit all over them. <laughs> Starring Mr. Dick. <laughs> yeah. Brought to you by the creators of Troll 2. And, and Ghoulies 1 through 9. And Meatballs 4. <laughs> <laughs> and Caddyshack 2. And the Bring writer, you. producer of Ghostbusters 2016. <laughs> comes yeah. this... Shit sandwich of a storm. 
he, so the guy the guy who made Ghostbusters 2016 has actually made some good movies. He made Heavyweights, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, I love Heavyweights. It wasn't him that was trying to make it personal. He was just he just he had his vision. He ran with it. It was the uh, the studio head woman that wanted it to that pushed it to be what it was. Uh, I don't blame the director, although he did spend way too much money on it. He should have known better. Like they spent like 140 million on it. And uh, they did all kinds of reshoots and stuff. Yeah. I don't well, know. Chris Hemsworth, like, totally miscast. I know they were trying to be funny because it's like, oh, this is Thor. You know, he's a big action star, but now he's just a big pussy. But even that bugged the shit out of me. So it's like every they took all my they took the Ghostbusters, they took Thor, all these things that I love, and just kind of didn't respect anything. They just they should have made him the bad guy. And then or, the guy that played yeah. the bad guy should have been the Janine. Yeah, they they totally. It's a shit. Well, it, there's a reason we're going to be covering it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't really have to. I don't have to say anything else. Well, there's a reason we're doing it. So I am going to unload on that film. Yes, definitely. Cannot wait. It's going to be less ripping and more just tearing it apart. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going in with a mean spirit. I'm actually going to try to do some things that piss me off before we do the episode. So I come in nice and angry. And I love the actresses, man. And most of the stuff I see them in, they're fucking hilarious. You know, but um, this it just feels so forced. Melissa McCarthy, Cartney, or whatever. And uh, she is so funny in Tammy. She's funny in Identity Theft. She's funny in The Heat. She's funny in Mike and Molly. She's great Happy in Town Gilmore Workers. Girls. Yeah, she's good in any, everything she's ever done. Kristen um, Wiig is pretty good. Oh, dude. Bridesmaids. Her on Saturday Night Live where they're talking. The Californians. Kate that McKinnon. little skit. Kate McKinnon is a genius. Um, they Leslie just Jackson blew it. Is good. They blew yeah. it. Yeah. They blew it. They, you, can't, you can't make a submarine sandwich if you're given the ingredients to make a shit sandwich. So <laughs> it's going to be a shit sandwich. Uh, no matter how you put it together. Yummy. We're going to love it. It's going to be so good. <laughs> you can be the best sandwich artist, and it's going to be a shit sandwich. And we get to eat it in two weeks. <laughs> so, oh, I already uh, had it once. Let's eat it again. <laughs> exactly. We're coming back for seconds. They even um, made a documentary on Netflix about that Ghostbusters film. Do you remember that? It's like, Ghostbusters is back. Like, it's going to be awesome. It's like trying to pump you up. And I'm like, okay, well, this kind of sounds, you know, pretty good. And they went into the toys and the cartoon, kind of pumped me up. Then I saw the movie and I'm like, that documentary lied to me. Yeah, my lied. kids liked it, but I can't blame them for that because you know they've seen the old ones, but it's the old ones to them. Yeah, you know, because yeah. it was they didn't grow up with it. So I get how kids might like the new one, but it was not. There was no fan service whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in the theater, uh, everybody was pissed. There wasn't anybody that a lot of people got up and left during the movie. Um, okay. So. Yep, two weeks, slash tracks, shit sandwich, uh, Ghostbusters. Um, yeah, any closing remarks, Alex? This is the t I had fun with Ghoulies. Yeah, Ghoulies was fun because it was, it, and it was nice to watch a movie that I hadn't seen a hundred times before, and it was also nice to be not, because I love horror movies, and, and you love horror movies, but I have a special place in my heart for the first two episodes we covered, you know, Jason yeah, X and yeah. Freddy's Dead, so to be able to go into one of these episodes, and to not feel guilty for trying to make fun of it. <laughs> yeah. I have no allegiance to Ghoulies. Ghoulies can fuck off. Ghoulies right. is not good. It's a terrible movie. And uh, I look forward to unloading on Ghostbusters. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah Ghoulies is definitely not good cheese. Because there is good cheese. Leprechaun is good cheese. At least Lepre I yes, Leprechaun. And Leprechaun has moments where it's actually dark and scary as well. So it's not <laughs> all... Warwick Davis just hamming it up. Like yeah. those are later installments. Um, I wanted to say one other film before we wrap things up. I want to somehow do Redneck Zombies. Uh, it's a trauma film. Have you seen that? Uh, -uh but I love trauma. So uh, Redneck Zombies. If we can somehow get a hold of that, it's like one of those movies that it's so ridiculous, but it's funny. And I, they're trying to do Return of the Living Dead, but they just miss completely. And I, okay. it would be an easy one to do. All right, sure, we'll put that on the list. Have you ever seen <laughs> Cannibal the Musical? I've seen, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw part of it on YouTube, but I fell asleep. I actually went to sleep to it, which is embarrassing. My son used to sing the baked potato song um, whenever he was little. Um, I I'd like to do that one at some All right. point. 
Um, but yeah, we'll 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 get those on the list. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Hope you watched along. Uh, if you understood the movie better than us, and if we missed a narrator at some point, let us know in the comments. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks.